With the release of version 0.4, early access of a set of Corsa Evo, we get jittery cars in a parking lot. Actually, we get like some cool stuff, but there isn't really a big overhaul to the general performance. Today's performance is very similar to version uh, 0.2, but it's pretty awesome to be at the Nordschleife uh, and kind of like an open lobby. This is like the classic car culture, the car meetup that a set of Corsa has. And just in case there was any doubt, yes, I am one of those white knuckled maniacs trying to tame a Ferrari F40. But the biggest challenge is, of course, navigating the actual parking lot. And once you come to grips with the turning radius of a 1990s uh, supercar icon, uh, you can actually pull right up to the gate and, and head out. Compared to the rigid structure of Le Mans Ultimate and iRacing and all the other, um, you know, take themselves too serious simulators, it's fun to get in a supercar and proceed to uh, basically crash the first time you hit the pedal. And if you survive a full lap, you can make it all the way back and, and queue up to do another one. Again, there's nothing new here compared to a set of course of the original. It's just fun to be in the new engine, the new physics. Uh, a lot of things need to be improved, but uh, it is fun out of the box. In this video, I'm looking at the performance between the 9070 XT and the 5070 Ti. Both have 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Only triple 4K testing pushed consumption beyond 12 gigabytes. And I'm using the 9800X3D on the Ryzen platform because of course I want to remove a CPU bottleneck. Check the video description for hardware details. The first thing I wanted to figure out with this simulator is that we've got new tracks and what is the performance difference between those tracks? So I started off with Monza because this would be a really good example of testing one of my biggest critiques when I first looked at the beta. With 30 cars on grid, uh, up top it's single make, underneath it is multi-class and we see a Seto concertina effect. They, they line up and bump into each other heading into, you know, the infamous chicane. I suppose I should be thankful they even make it to turn one because at version 0.1, they couldn't even do that. It's difficult to take the single player seriously if this is what's going to happen. I wanted to see if there was an outlier here, if one track performed significantly better than a, another one, and I couldn't find that. So I stuck with the Cayman uh, GT4 RS. I kept it at the single make, maxed out the AI, which is usually 28, I think, for all of these tracks. I think a couple were at 29. And here were the results that I collected. I kept the weather clear, sunny, and a 1 p.m. race. It seems like Road Atlanta was the most challenging, but I ended up picking Red Bull Ring uh, RBR here because it's a wide track for production cars and I can just drive around the crappy AI. I should say though that I don't get pit maneuvered anymore, which was one of the more frustrating aspects of uh, point one. I also did some weather testing again. Now I don't have footage of this because originally it was with a caterum around Road Atlanta, again, using AI. The 5070 Ti enjoys a 11% advantage over the 9070 XT in the day. And both lose about 10% when we go to a rain day. During this preliminary testing, I also did night scenario and I was very surprised to see this. Now this was just a single benchmark run for each of these scenarios. It was preliminary, so I had to dive deeper into this. Is this a real advantage for the Radeon 9070 XT? I did these benchmark runs at the Red Bull Ring in the Lotus Exige V6. Up top is the 9070 XT and underneath is the 5070 Ti. And right off the bat, we can see a small advantage going in favor of Radeon. I'm using the Cap Frame X overlay here to showcase the real-time results. The GeForce card seems to struggle a bit more down by the pit straight. Also, when the cars are slightly more uh, condensed and, and close together. My results also suggest that the GeForce in all of my testing consumes more VRAM, um, up to 800 megabytes more, and the CPU utilization seems to always be higher with the GeForce card. Again, this is all real-time testing. This is not a replay, so they get out of sync a little bit here, so it's not easy to do that side-by-side -side comparison. Switching to the bar graph, we can see once again the advantage to the 5070 Ti during the day. 
but the Radeon card gains at night and actually barely takes the lead. But we don't see the big gains uh, from the preliminary test because that was done at triple 1440p. This test was done at single 4K. Triple screens always requires more compute from the CPU because we're having, we have three viewports. So my theory is that the 5070Ti has some kind of inefficiency in its driver. It's relying a bit too much on the CPU and the triple screen scenario exploits that or punishes the card for that. Regardless, the 9070 XT has less of an S FPS drop when we go to nighttime, whether it's sunny or in the rain. One thing I really like about the rain in a set of Corsa Evo is the way it kind of um, moves with the droplets on the windscreen, uh, how it smears. I think that's a cool effect, but the mist that's coming up, uh, rooster tail, I don't know what I'd even call that. Uh, it looks preposterous. I don't know why the wind of the car is moving faster than the car. It looks very bizarre. The AI stays on the dry line, the dry line, is better for traction is what I found. And even in this Lotus, the car would just break wild sometimes. I don't know if it's supposed to represent standing water or what, but uh, very annoying. But I think I had traction control off for all of this testing. So, you know, maybe I, I signed up for that adventure. Another thing you can notice with the night driving is the reflection of the dash off of the windscreen. I don't mind the effect. I wish it was tunable so that I could just like, you know, make it more transparent and less obvious. The AI driver scripting also lacks some, I don't know, randomness. We'll see a car off here, and that car would like always go off, one of them at least, in the same spot. Like I could just go back out to menu, come back in, do another race. There'll be another car that spins off there. So I don't know, there's some, something missing from the random number generator. Oh man, just look at that spray. It just, it's, this looks like a cartoon or something. Back to the daytime and blue skies for the resolution scaling tests. I went with the medium graphic preset and applied two times MSAA. We're gonna start with the single screen resolutions and I just have the standard ones here, 1080p, 1440p and 4K. At the lowest resolution, the 5070Ti leads the 9070XT by 8.8%. Kunos has built this engine on top of the DirectX 12 API, unlike uh, Unreal Engine 4 for Competizione and DirectX 11 for the original Assetto Corsa. Unfortunately, GPU Busy does not reveal meaningful information in this simulator. Neither card is drawing full power, nor are they fully, uh, is the GPU fully utilized. I don't have the data here, but the 5090 does 270 FPS, also pretends to be 100% busy, but again, not consuming full power or being fully utilized. At 1440p, the 9070 XT gains a little bit, so now it's only 8.3% slower than the 5070 Ti. And at 4K, it is 7.2% slower than the GeForce card. If I had done this testing at night, I'm sure the Radeon would have matched or maybe even outperformed GeForce. With triple screen testing, I used this FOV setting. It's a bit exaggerated, but it's fine for benching. And if you do not run full screen with iFinity or Surround, you can always use Resize, Raccoon, which works for me now. I don't think it worked for me back uh, at the beginning of early access. I usually measure a two, 3% uh, performance advantage to running full screen with surround or Ifinity, but um, most of you guys, I wouldn't even worry about that. And here are those results uh, again at the day, showing that the 9070 XT is still trailing behind, but it's a bit closer than single screen performance. At triple 1440p, the 9070 XT trails by four, uh, 5.8%. And once again, if I was testing at night, maybe we would see this kind of gap instead. If you would like to see everything in one chart, here it is. But again, this is just daytime sunny sky testing. All of this testing was also done at the medium preset because visually I couldn't see an advantage to high or ultra. For example, if I stack medium on top and ultra underneath, we can do this side by side comparison. Maybe with some more deliberate uh, screenshots or finding a unique scenario of, I don't know, some kind of sunset with uh, trees at Nordschleife, I don't know. Maybe there's another way to actually find a, a, a difference here, but at the Red Bull Ring, you know, flying around in the Lotus, I, I couldn't find it. And when we look at the bar graphs, we actually see the 5070 Ti trail a little bit, especially with the lows. 
Some of you may have noticed that it's 0.1% lows in the previous charts that we've been talking about throughout this video. They tend to be a little bit beneath the 9070XT as well, but something about the night just doesn't work well or as well for this GeForce card. I also went through and did the same quality comparison at the daytime, bright sunny sky, and this time I also had the high preset. I did not change from 4K resolution and MSAA is also two times. The disadvantage to the 9070XT goes from 7.2% at uh, medium and then down to 6.8% negative for ultra. And generally speaking, this is one of the best showings I've seen for the 9070XT because it has a price advantage over this GeForce competitor. It's 20% cheaper. So if you're focused on buying something for the newest set of Corsa Evo, this could be a very compelling option. However, we do have some upscaling options available in the graphics tab. Kunos has included both DLSS 4 for NVIDIA and FSR 3 for AMD. As usual, you can use FSR 3 with GeForce, but not the other way around. As of December 10th, we have FSR Redstone. However, when it comes to a set of Corsa Evo, I see no option for that type of frame generation or with an upgrade to the scaling. As far as I measured, the latest driver has no performance advantage with Ace. And the visual image quality has not changed either. In my testing, I still kept MSAA two times uh, activated and I'm only comparing the two quality presets, not the performance. So I put together a little side-by-side -side action here, and on the left we have the DLSS at quality, and then on the right FSR3 at quality. This is not the same race uh, replay or anything, this is two separate races, so it's real-time performance that I captured. DLSS has the advantage over FSR, however the uh, less smooth motion you might be seeing with the Radeon, that's for my capture method, I, I'll do better next time. And in this example, you know, in the cockpit, just driving around the Red Bull ring, I could not spot a difference either in the image quality that's being presented. With the Radeon processing though, I would say this is, you know, without an image scaler even, I would say the Radeon does have a bit more of a, a ghost, I guess, behind the car, but I do have motion blur on, so I, we just can't compare in this example. Looking at the benchmark result, this is at ultra quality from uh, the in-game preset. So this is not comparative to the medium quality we're testing at the other resolutions, but we can still see the DLSS advantage. Although once again, those NVIDIA minimums show up. Using the NVIDIA app, I also selected the latest DLSS and I saw a further performance gain, but enabling FSR 4 within the Adrenaline software doesn't do anything because natively the SIM does not support it. And I did check with triple screens to see, you know, do these image scalers work? And yeah, they do. These results are triple 4K with ultra preset. Again, I'm with the quality setting and I don't know why using the latest DLSS within the NVIDIA app produces, uh, doesn't produce that game we just had at single screen. I mean, these things are finicky. And while I thought DLSS looked fine, I can't say the same about the FSR3. Sure, it looks great here on the bar chart, but let's actually look at this. I used the Adrenaline built-in game capture, which is pretty amazing at actually capturing this insane resolution. Uh, however, when things get into motion, we see some pretty bad graphical effects. FSR3 really struggled here, and we see a tremendous amount of blurriness um, around the trees, the cars, shadows, things like that. I mean, th this isn't an insane, you know, situation here. We're at 11,520 uh, by 2160 resolution uh, across three monitors. And yeah, the FSR just it wasn't designed, or at least this version of it cannot handle it. I have seen some talk and some users explaining the gains and some of the problems they run into with OptiScaler trying to enable FSR4 with Evo. I haven't attempted, I, I, I don't know. So at this point of early access, it seems like uh, if you're going to be using an image scaler, maybe uh, NVIDIA is a better choice. So I think the 5070 Ti wins this head-to-head -head comparison with better performance, the DLSS advantage, but it does have worse minimums and it's inefficient with night scenes. Whereas the 9070 XT has more consistent performance as the variables change, it's also cheaper, but you do lose out on a little bit performance and image quality. 
And pricing might be the most important thing to talk about here because rumors are AMD is going to be increasing graphics card uh, prices across both the eight gigabyte and 16 gigabyte models. This is just a rumor, but if we look at the trend of pricing, the overall price of a 9070 XT is pretty much at its lowest. And you can find models selling near MSRP in some regions. Now, I'm not here to advocate purchasing out of fear or anxiety, but if we've looked at the DDR5 pricing over the last couple months, the pain is real. I just can't think of any reason to expect a graphics card to be cheaper in 2026 than it is right now. So if you're looking to upgrade, I think now is the time. And I've gone through with my Amazon affiliate links, I've figured out a proper genius account and uh, have searched through for the cheapest models that I could find in the US region, hoping that those would be cheaper in all regions too. So browse the description below for those models and support my channel.